Whenever you get a situation or a question like this where you have a sin and a cause, but the angles inside are different, then you cannot use tan. Because we know that tan x, for example, is the same as sin x over cos x. Notice that everything is the same. You could even have something like tan x plus 10, but then that would be sin x plus 10 over cos x plus 10. So there has to be a match. When they are different though, you guys need to remember this. We are going to use co-functions. Okay? Now, some of you might be saying, Kevin, what are co-functions? It's a property of sin and cos where we can say that sin 10, for example, is the same as cos 80. Cos 70 is the same as sin 20. Sin 5 is the same as cos 85. Sin and cos have this property that if the angles add up to 90 degrees, then they are equal to each other. Okay? Now, mathematically, what this means is that cos x is always going to be the same as the sin of 90 minus x. Sin x is always going to be cos 90 minus x. So what we do, completely ignore this one, because some students get confused with that. What can we change this into? We can change cos 2x, so we'll use this as our template, into sin 90 minus 2x. Let's do some more practice because I know students struggle with this. I've seen this a lot. So cos of 8x is the same as sin 90 minus 8x. Sin of 5x, for example, is the same as cos 90 minus 5x. You get the picture? It's got nothing to do with this one. We're not changing that, okay? We're changing this one into sin 90 minus 2x. So in the next line, do that. Great, because check here. What we now have is a sin on both sides. And so what we do is we can ignore the sins, okay? Now, this is where it gets a bit weird. What you should do now is treat this one as your reference angle and the last thing that we had was sin and so we're gonna work in the quadrants uh, for sin and I just want to quickly show you there was no negatives in the front here so we're not gonna so we're gonna work in the quadrants where sin is a positive so we're gonna go into quadrants number one and quadrants number two because that is where sin is positive and we would normally start off with x minus 10 you know like for example if the question said sin x minus 10 equals to 0 0.3 you would go and find your reference angle and then you would start with x minus 10 and you would say x minus 10 what would come next would be your reference angle but what we just said is that in this weird method you got to let this be your reference angle so that comes next 90 minus 2x plus k times 360. k is an element of integers. In quadrant 2 we would say 180 minus and then the reference angle. But because this reference angle comes in two parts you must put a bracket like that and then you say plus k times 360. k is an element of integers. If you understand that part then everything's fine. The rest is easy. The rest is normal. So now we're going to solve for x. So you're going to bring the minus 2x over. So we're going to end up with 3x equals to 100 plus k times 360. k is an element of integers. Then for the next part, we're just going to simplify a bit. x minus 10 equals to 180 minus 90 plus 2x plus k times 360. k is an element of integers. Then get x alone. Don't worry about x becoming a negative. So it's going to be x minus 2x, which is negative x. Then on the right-hand side, we're going to get 100 plus k times 360, k is an element of integers. And then to get x alone here on the right hand side, you're just going to divide everything by a negative, and that's going to give you that. There we go. If your teacher ever told you to keep this part positive, mathematically it's actually okay, but if they didn't, then just ignore what I just said. Okay, so, oh, and then we need to get x alone on this right hand side, I mean the left hand side, so we're going to divide everything by 3, so that's going to give us 33.33, .33 
plus k times 120. It's very important that you divide the k360 as well. Now, up till here, this is called the general solution. But in this question, they gave us an interval. Can you see that? From 0 to 180. So we need to go plug in values of k now. So just remember the interval that we are looking for is 0 up to 180. So what we can do now is we can say that x is equal to, and then we can do these cool brackets over here. Now, we start off with this one on the left-hand side. If k is 0, then x would just be 33,33. Then we can plug in values of k like 1, minus 1, 0, minus 2, any integer number. So if k is 1, then you're going to get 153.33. If k is 2, then you're going to get 273.33, and that is too big. If k is minus 1, then you're going to get a negative answer, and that's not allowed because our interval starts at 0. So that is all that we are going to be able to get from this first one. Now we move over to the right-hand side, and we can start off with k equals to 0, but that's going to give us negative 100. Then we could make k equal to 1, but then you're just going to go more negative. So then what we do is we can make k equal to negative 1. So that's going to look like this, x equals to minus 100 minus minus 1 times 360. And that's going to actually end up plussing. And so we're going to end up with 260 degrees. But that is too big for our interval. And so the only answers we are going to get will be those two.